Hello everyone, I'm Fozzie or Cam, and I'm here with my co-host, Will. How are you doing today, Will? Doing great, Cam, and uh, happy hol ha uh, happy holidays to you. We're inching toward them. Uh, Christmas this Sunday, the new year right around the corner. So yeah, I'm doing great, and how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, and guys, welcome to the Everything Podcast. Today, we'll be talking about Avatar 2, but quickly, because I actually haven't seen it yet. But will you have? So please, tell me your thoughts. Just tell me how you liked it. Just a Yay! Quick summary. Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll just talk, I'll just kind of give you know a brief no spoilers review. Yeah, okay, perfect. So look, obviously, look, were the visuals stunning? Like like some of the best that you've ever seen? Of course. Like that's like if there's ever something that that and that you can just book every time with 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 Avatar films, it's this um i would say like um the things the things that i liked the most about the film were it's was its family story and its message of protecting our oceans which i know that james cameron cares about yep. a lot and was something and the that last he, one was the trees portray yeah so those two like 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 those two storylines were two things that i loved about the film i thought it really brought it in I the final be, yeah. half hour or so that, but the that sounds that familiar to yeah. the first Avatar too. Yeah, but the the thing that puts it below the original for me is I didn't find the dialogue as strong. Like I thought, like the like the story was fine, but the dialogue between the characters I didn't find as strong, and also the story felt less fresh to me as it did when I went in and watched the original app. Yeah, um, Avatar for the first time. So, um, I I think this is a good movie. I think the like in terms of the visuals, if that's not what you go to the movie theater for, then I don't know what you go to the movie theater for. So, did I think this was a good a good movie? I did, but because of um, I thought a uh, weaker dialogue and a less fresh story, I can't put it over the original uh, um avatar in my question going forward if they're you know e if they're able to make enough money is yeah. what more can they do because i don't see how how they can go higher than yeah, they maybe did they'll have to focus on the story this time around you know yeah okay. yeah so um i liked this film you know great visuals you know great messages great final half half hour but the weaker dialogue and less fresh story is what doesn't put it over the uh, um original for me. Yeah, I totally get that. You know, I feel I feel like this was expected, but on like a number, like out of 10, what do you give it? I would go maybe maybe 7.5 to wow. eight this time. I okay. well, you would my guess like maybe like that's you gave what the first, I gave one, the first seven. one. So Yeah, that's what you gave. I, I mean yeah, so my grade is, yeah, like, what your grade is for the first one. Yeah. Okay. So, a, Basically. all right. That means I'll probably end up giving it a six. But I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in expecting to be blown away. Well, not I mean, having ultra high expectations, but I'm not going to set them low. I'm not going to go crazy. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to try to remain even. I mean, I'm glad that you'll be able to see it on the big screen this time. I think that'll improve your experience, but I'll be... Yeah, like, I'll be very curious, yeah, to see what your thoughts are. And uh, you saw it in uh, 3D? I did, yeah. yeah I uh, look, uh, it is really mandatory to watch Avatar in 3D. My dad and I saw the uh, Fablemans a, 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 a few weeks back, which was very good, by the way. And when the Avatar trailer played before the film, and, like, this film was only being showed on, on like, this, on, like, you know, smaller screens, like, it wasn't meant for. 3D, yeah. like like a smaller film. Yeah. When Avatar got played on that screen, I was just like, this screen's too small. You just can't <laughs> see it here. So like, it truly is mandatory to see Avatar in 3D or else you're just not going to be able to immerse yourself into the world of Pandora um, in as great a way as you can. Wow. That's actually really good to know. So to all you people out there who are considering waiting it, waiting for it to come out on streaming or something, definitely check it out in theaters. Um, yeah, there are actually two movies on my bucket list right now for uh, 
Well, actually, three. Uh, I have Avatar, obviously. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. I think that movie deserves more hype. We need to get we need to get excited about Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. It, I, I've talked about it before in the podcast. Animated movies are overhated. So uh, that that definitely goes on my bucket list. I it mean, looks like a I fun mean, movie. Speaking of like animated films being under being under radar, I'll just I'll just name a great run one right now. Spider Man into the into the Spider Verse, and maybe that can be our transition to our next topic right now. That was a smooth transition, Will. Thank you. Um, I wasn't even mean to set that set that up, but it worked. <laughs> um, so I actually made a short about um, Spider Verse yeah. trailer. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Across the Spider Verse. Um, and I'm excited to see what uh, happens with it. We didn't get a whole lot in the trailer. Uh, we got some cool dialogue. We got some cool shots. You know, we got to see those Spider Men. Uh, got the PS4 Spider Man. Uh, we got Spectacular Spider Man, I think, was in there uh, from the Disney XD show. So that's really yeah. exciting. It's all really exciting things. Um, Spider Man twenty ninety nine, all yeah, cool things. So yeah, so yeah, so like this, this sounds all like very very cool to me. So like, are they taking all these different like, like, video games, Spider Man and, and and stuff, and just putting them like into, into this film? Like, are there a number of like Spider Man fr- from different? Games and stuff that there's they're putting Spider-Man into this from movie. Spider-Man games. There are different. Love it. There are different suits from different games that are in here. Uh, I th- I think it might have been from a, another game or something that I'm unaware of, but there was a suit because PS4 came out with a Spider-Man game, and um, in case you guys didn't know, <laughs> um, and there's a skin with Spider-Man with his regular suit, but has a brown paper bag over his head instead of a mask. And I saw that uh, Spider-Man in there, so I guess they're just doing like different skins yeah. uh, of a character in there. So they're just I mean, like they're going all out. Every Spider-Man you can think of is in this game. I mean, I think that's the power of animation for you, right yeah. there. That's what you can do with. Yeah, you can never um, do that. And I've obviously, I yeah, think we talked about it before, but the live action is rumored to be in this one and across the Spider-Verse or the one coming out next year. Awesome, awesome. But yeah, so wait two years. Yeah, wait, yeah. So live action like um like the live action Spider Man in this film or in these films or Uh well they're supposed to be Toby and Andrew actually. Okay. So like do you like like do you think we could actually see them like in this film? Like what do you think Um, the chances are? I think, uh, do you know the title of the one after Across the Spider-Verse? Have they come out with it yet? Isn't it just, like, it. part two? Isn't it yeah, doing, like, a yeah. part one and part two for Across but the, the Spider-Verse? Part yeah. part two would be more okay. likely to have a minute. That would just be Well, sense. listen. And it's uh, not been confirmed. Sure, sure, sure. Allow me to say this, though. Oh, boy. If Toby McGuire, Andrew Garfield, or Tom Holland ever appear in these films... That would be nice. I will lose my mind. That that is what I live for as an as an MCU fan. Stuff like that, and with the Spider Man and all these Spider Mans that they're going to have in Spider Man Across the Spider Verse Part One, why not try and have Toby and Andrew and Tom in it if they want to be in it? I mean, I just think that's an opportunity they should not miss out on. And yeah, this just looks like yeah, just Spider Verse chaos in this film, yeah. and I'm and I'm all for it. I, yeah. I I mean, the power of animation is truly being put onto it's display with yeah. these with these films. The first one was so well done, um, and there's been no drop off as of yet with the trailer for yeah, yeah Spider Man across great. the Spider Verse, and if. If, yeah, as I said, if we could ever get Toby or Andrew or Tom in one of these films, oh, that would just be so awesome. Yeah, that that would be fun. I mean, I, I love Andrew and Toby Spider-Man, so. And it was They're fun fantastic. seeing them in uh, No Way Home, too, which yeah, what did, what recently did celebrated you... its one-year anniversary. Yeah, and Sony and Marvel decided that they had to re-release it. For a money grab, like it's just so sad. It's just 
it's so sad to me that like that 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 I'm that I have to like critique them for that. Like I should yeah, I should I, I should just have this I should just be able to celebrate this movie with as you're saying, yeah, not even have to think about that. But Eddie, but yeah, just quickly on No Way Home, because you know, we're talking Spider Man. I think like I think it came out about December sixteenth last year, so we're at about the one year anniversary of it right right now. So let me say this. On approximately its one year anniversary, I would just like to applaud again. What what a cinematic achievement Spider-Man No Way Home was. That thing was a masterpiece. Willem Dafoe, I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah. That guy gave an epic, epic performance in that film. I would I think you could make an argument that Tom Holland gives the best spider-man performance in that film with just the emotional story that his character went on on the one year anniversary i would just like to appreciate once again the cinematic masterpiece that that movie was it's one of the greatest superhero movies of all time and it's gonna live on for generations yeah well actually Willem the foe has a um new movie coming out soon oh cool. march 10th uh 2023 um it's called Inside. Uh, I believe it's A24, and they make some... Uh, I, I believe it's A24. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but uh, A24 is known for making some crazy, crazy movies, like uh, The Whale with Brendan Fraser, which you might have heard of. Uh, it's coming out, you might have seen trailers. Um, but they're making this one, and it's crazy. It's called Inside, and... From what I understand from the trailer, Willem Dafoe plays a guy who's stuck in his apartment. Okay. That's from that's what I got from uh, the trailer. It's a psychological horror film. Okay. So I well, think yeah. he will be up for awards if this movie is good. Because this, yeah. this is a movie that could be outstanding for Willem Dafoe. He, well, he, he is such a stunning... Actor, like yeah. I think we, what he can do I think we maybe is so impressive. Oh my gosh! And, and the 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 laugh and the line, the laugh, yep, the laugh, the line delivery and the speech patterns he has for the Green Goblin. I think we've like talked about this on this podcast before, but like as great as like a Doc Ock is, like Doc Ock is fantastic. The Green Goblin has to be my favorite Spider-Man villain. Yeah, his performance is just too good. Yep. Gotta be my favorite Spider-Man villain. The Green Goblin. Yeah. Hands and down. Aside for from, me. Uh, and, uh, and and we've had some great Spider-Man yeah, we sure villains. Have. But even just like this is credit to Willem Dafoe and his performance. We have had some great Spider-Man villains, yet if you ask me who's your favorite, oh yeah, More it's obvious. Him. I, I don't even think about it. <laughs> what they did to Vulture at the end of that film. <laughs> Makes yeah. zero sense. Explanation, Such a good character please. too. Such a good character. Now Michael. How did now Michael, Michael Keaton, Keaton even is, agree to that? Now why did he? Why did Michael Keaton even agree to that? Is my I think it makes no sense. It might have been like on the contract, you know. I feel like because now he's okay. got sucked into this Sony verse. This well, Sony see, that Spider-verse. is the disappointing. Like that is the thing, though. If you're a uh, a Marvel actor, and I think I might have read about Chris Hemsworth hesitating to sign on his door for this reason. Like, gosh, if you're a Marvel actor, you boy, you have to sign a contract and sign on for multiple movies. And it's like a, and, it's like a NFL contract. Exactly. Like, like credit to these actors for doing this because you don't know what you're signing on for. Maybe your thing will be great, but maybe it'll be bad. So, you know, really credit to these Marvel actors for yeah. agreeing to su- to sign on to such long contracts. I mean, yeah. look at how long and Chris mostly it's worked out. has been mostly in the it's MCU. Worked out. Oh, yeah. Marvel, yeah. Like, the Infinity Saga was overall a masterpiece, and we've had some masterpieces throughout yeah. the multiverse uh, saga as well. No Way Home, some, uh, Multiverse of yeah, well, don't even get She-Hulk. either of us started with uh, yeah, She-Hulk, the worst to product. Yeah, too much negativity. Sounds good to me. But and anyway, yeah. To fix that negativity, we have Christmas movies because it's almost Christmas time. Uh, so we wanted to talk about some Christmas movies we all like. Um, 
Will, why don't you uh, tell us about some Christmas movies you like to watch? I'll, yeah, I'll just I'll just start off with this one. Uh, Elf, obviously, because uh, Will Will Ferrell is just stunning in that movie. He is so good. He like that movie I could watch every single year. And we watched. Uh, I mean, I know you know your your family enjoys uh, Christmas Chronicles on Netflix, and we watched the first one last year. We're gonna watch uh, the sequel. This year, I thought that movie was fantastic. Kurt Russell was yeah. outstanding. So I like those first, two. I like the first a lot more than the second. And I the think second. Well, the first time I watched the first one, I liked it. Second time, meh. I still think it's a good movie. I love that prison scene with Steve Van Zandt. Uh, oh my god! And I didn't even. I am shocked that I had never heard that he had done a movie. Yeah. He was he was fantastic. That scene. You know he you know he has great. his own sh Netflix show. Does he really? Yeah, What's it it's called? um Lily Hammer. I think it's called. But he plays like a mobster. It's it's because he was you know he was in the Sopranos. Um, it's like it, it, this is his time to shine. He has a brief awesome. cameo in The Irishman. Um, so, yeah, I guess he's really involved in these mob movies and shows. Um, well, good for Steve Van Zandt then, yeah. It's a, and, it's uh, a comedy, too. Uh, so, yeah, that's really interesting. But he was also a producer, I believe, on uh, Christmas Chronicles. Oh, cool. Oh, well, shout out to the yeah. legendary Steve Van Zandt then. And, yeah, what are, what are some of your favorites, Kim? I actually, before I do that, I'd like to describe how much I hate Christmas Chronicles 2. Okay. I think it is just the definition of a poorly made sequel. They, one of the, one of the, a really interesting character in the first one, Teddy. You know, Teddy, he, he starts off the movie stealing, breaking into cars. Right. You know, doing bad stuff. Okay. He ends the movie, being nice to his sister, being great. So you think... He would be in the second movie? He has roughly five minutes of screen time. What? Wow! Okay. What? Yeah. I am shocked. It is. He's in wow. The, he's in the beginning of the movie, first 15 minutes maybe, then you will Does never... Does that make logical you, sense? Don't see him again until, like, the final scene. It doesn't well, make sense. I'm dumb. I'm dumbfounded by that one. That just doesn't make sense. It, it, take, it really take doesn't. Take one of your main characters from the first film. Yep. And just completely. Just ha wow. get rid of them. <laughs> it, That's it, really too bad. It doesn't make you sense. know, to, to, to what you're saying about, like, the sequel not, not living up to the uh, um original, look, are there great sequels that have been made? Yes. Marvel has a lot of great sequels. Yeah. Star Wars has some great sequels. The uh, Rocky franchise has some great yeah, Rocky. sequels. Top Gun Maverick is better Unexpected, than the but... original film. But look, there is also the sad truth that there are franchises that don't make great sequels. And That's I just think sure. that that that, you know, sometimes you'll get a great sequel, maybe even get one that is better than the original film. But then a lot of the time you'll get stuff like this too, because it's just hard to catch Lightning in a bottle twice. It, yeah. It, 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 it's but hard like to, you, to recreate that same magic that yeah, you Yeah, but like you said, there are quite product. a few. There are a lot of successful sequels. I mean, uh, Indiana Jones 3 yeah. is is your favorite. If and that Indiana Jones 2 is still instance. a great movie. That's awesome. Um, But yeah, yeah, totally. Not all sequels are bad. I just think... Uh, Does anything get Christmas worse Chronicles for you than... ...is particularly yeah. bad. Does anything get worse for you than the than the uh, Jaws sequels? Um, I actually Jaws one, two, and three. I enjoy Jaws okay. one, obviously Jaws two. Yeah, it's a good movie. Jaws three, cheesy, yes, stupid, yes, weirdly shot, yes, awfully acted, yes, poorly made, yes, fun. Yes. I really enjoy watching this movie in the summer. Jaws of the Revenge. Um, uh, well, Michael Caine is in it. And that, that, that's all, that's all has going for it. That's about it? <laughs> yes. Right. Sir Michael Caine. Uh, and yeah. speaking of Michael Caine, 
I'd like to talk about the Christmas movie I'd like to recommend to you all. The Muppets Christmas Carol. Oh, cool. With Michael Caine as the lead. Um, it, it's it's my favorite rendition of A Christmas Car- Carol. Um, I've seen the Jim Carrey one. I've seen the Mickey Mouse one. Uh, which I don't think is even close to scratching the surface of um, Christmas Carol movies. Because I know there have been quite a few made. But I really like uh, the Muppets one. Uh, it... it in cor- it's crazy because Michael Caine, a legendary actor, doesn't interact with h- hardly any humans in this movie. He's mostly just talking to these puppets. It's crazy and it's really well made, really well done. And it came out in 1992 when I really like it. Awesome. Another big holiday movie, obviously, is Home Alone. But have you yes. seen have you seen both Home Alone's Will Home Alone One? I've two? seen the first one. Have okay. you seen both of them? I have, and obviously there were other ones. There's Home Alone Three, Four, Five, and one that came out last year, Home Sweet Home Alone. How would you rank them? So I've only seen the first two, and they are perfect. Perfect should not have been a third, and if there was, it should have had Macaulay Culkin in it, but it didn't. In fact, this is one of Scarlett Johansson's earliest uh, roles in a movie. Oh, really? Cool. I haven't seen the movie. I don't know who she plays. Um, but I don't know why they would consider doing a Home Alone movie without Macaulay Culkin. It just doesn't make sense to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I, I totally get that. And look, like you, you talk about Christmas classics. Talk about the original Home Alone film. That's, yeah, a very rewatchable Christmas movie. Yeah, right agreed. There for you. Agreed. And it's just so well done for a child actor, you know? Absolutely. It's, yeah. Great, yeah, great child actor performance. And Joe that. Pesci, one of my favorite actors, is in it, and he's in both of them, and he's fantastic. Yeah, uh, but awesome. which one is better, do I think? I think the first one. The first one? That is a given, because there are just so many classic lines. But if we're going to talk about. Which one would I have more fun watching with friends? I would say Home Alone 2. Has better... Has a better finale. Has just more fun scenes in it, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. It has stuff that I wish Home Alone 1 had more of, you know? Yeah. Totally, totally, uh... Totally get that. But yeah, maybe I'll have to check out uh, the second one at some time if if you still really enjoy it and yeah Yeah, i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna yeah look at all the different yeah i'm gonna yeah maybe look at some rankings for this uh film franchise and and see what people think is the best and worst one because that's always fascinating to see yeah so now i think it's time to talk about the pats game oh boy okay so for those of you who don't know me and will are both patriots fans and for those of you who don't know they messed up. They messed up big time, Will. Okay, so first off, they, they're not doing great this season. <laughs> That's for sure. 500, right? yeah. 500 record. That is, yeah. It's not perfect. And Mac Jones, who I just heard, uh, hurt, hurt his ankle, I believe, this morning I heard. Um, too bad. Yeah, not not great. Uh, so last game, we uh, we did good, right? Until uh, it was about to go into overtime. Right. <sighs> I you know what? I can't even say it. Well, just I, just tell them. Well, yeah, the Raiders won on a walk off. TD, and I just... They could have let it go into overtime. He could have just like let it yeah. go into this... overtime. If if they just held on, to, held on to the ball, they were guaranteed a chance to win. Yeah, like, it, in the, yeah, like, like I think it, this is kind of along the lines of, of like, what you're saying and, and, and what made the ending so ridiculous. Like, I... I think this is what aggravated me 
of all the things that I thought would happen no. at the at to end that of all the things that I thought would happen on that final play, the Raiders winning the game was not even on my mind. Yeah. I thought the Patriots would just have the basic human decency to just hold on to the ball if they couldn't find a way to score, bring it into overtime. Maybe you win the coin toss in overtime. Maybe you can get the ball. Maybe you can march down the field and score a touchdown, even though your offense isn't that awfully impressive this year. But I think what made this the most disappointing to me, Cam, is that the out the, the that outcome, the way the Raiders won the game, I did not even humanly think that that would yeah. happen. That was not even on my mind. I I, I thought I thought it they would be so rare, and that is to me what was the most disappointing. How I just thought never in a million years that would a team happen. coached by Bill Belichick should not be doing that. That is just ridiculous. It is insulting. It is embarrassing. It is not what I go to watch the Patriots for. They All he had to do, all he had to do was not throw the ball backwards. Even if he held on to the ball, I would still call that stupid. Bill, coach your players correctly. Make I mean, sh- make do you sure. think he... I mean, I don't, I don't think make, he coach... I'm not making any excuses for Bill Belichick here. His job is to coach, and... But do you think he he ever coached them to do that, though, in training camp? He should have said... He should have said, don't throw the ball backwards when... If you just... Do you think he told them that? Do you think he told them that, or did you think that was was an in-moment panic? I don't think he told them that. No, I don't think he said... I don't think he told the players to not pass it backwards, but they should know that. And they should always have their senses with them. They should always know. Yeah. Just no in absolutely embarrassing. Embarrassing. Yeah, no. Look, that is truly the only word that you can find for this. Embarrassing. You know, allow me to say this. Like, the Indianapolis Colts. Collapse on Saturday. I just got back in NFL history from the Vikings, and yet that's going to get overshadowed by this dumb play that the Patriots made yeah. at the end of the game. Uh, I mean, it's just sad. I think we're getting welcomed to the real NFL after this these two decades of glory that we've experienced and, as Pats fans. It, it and I sense. truly it, don't. It yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it does. I'm, but I, I truly don't know what the future holds. Yeah. This offense has no dynamic weapons at all. Nope. Um, I know people talk about how like Mac Jones has digressed and isn't playing great this season. I'm gonna fully judge Mac Jones once he gets some weapons at the receiver yeah. spot. Like I'm not giving up. Devontae Parker on Mac cannot Jones. be carrying your team. Yeah, I, 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 I will, I will wait to that... judge Mac Jones until he gets more help around him. And Jacoby Myers listen, cannot be carrying your team. No, that is ridiculous. No, it's not a, not a, not a number. Yeah, not shouldn't be one of your top options. And Matt, no put, Matt, Matt Patricia did a great job with the Pats defensive coordinator for years. You know, Joe Judge. You know, obviously, like you know, had a had a good reputation with the Pats, but obviously something's going on yeah, with them sure. at the offensive coordinator spot. I I mean my guess is it's just that the it, 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 my guess is it's just that well I guess they're not even technically named as co-offensive coordinators yeah. they have some other classic Bill Belichick team Patriot titles but let's just call it like it is they're co-offensive coordinators and my gut tells me that they're just not great at their jobs but maybe part of it is the fact that they're sharing the position and players have to listen to two different minds at once yeah, and not totally. just focus on, on one. But I think the thing that the Patriots need to turn to the most is fixing this offensive coordinator spot and getting Mac Jones some, some weapons that he that he just doesn't have right now. I think that's where the Patriots I agree. need to need to turn to I agree. first. Look, it look, any like look. If the paint like look, 
even last season, the Patriots were at one point the number one seed in the AFC. Everybody was talking about it as Belichick's finest coaching job. Yeah. Belichick has had great moments post Brady, and I totally. believe that. And I yep. believe that if we can trot a great team, you know, out there on the field, like you know, like there is still absolutely no other coach that I would want than Bill Belichick. You know, sure. he's even had good moments this season. So, but they they've got to look at the offensive coordinator and getting Mac Jones weapons. That is where I believe they need to turn to totally. first to fix just what is not an elite offense by any stretch of the uh, imagination right now. Yeah, I I agree, and it's just so disappointing. What's going on with our Patriots? So, I'm going to say to all you Patriots fans out there, give up hope. This season? This season, yes. Give up hope. We are not going anywhere. It it's a reset season. It's a it's a get adjusted season. Cuz we've had to deal with Cam Newton, we've had to deal with a bunch of other stuff these past two seasons. Now we have a this is a reset season. A season to get ready for next, you know, to prepare. Yeah, so that's acceptable. I... Yep, I think you're absolutely right. And to be honest, this is the least, like, as a Pats fan, this is the least engaged that I've ever been in a Pats season because I'm I'm, I'm just not, I expect them to lose games. I expect them to go through these lumps. I, I, I just don't expect them to be great this year. So for that reason, I'm actually just kind of just sitting back and watching the product in front of me without getting so, you know, sucked in and, and depressed about them losing games. I just think this is this is yeah. who they are this season. And I really hope next season will be different, but they've got work to do. And that starts on the offensive side of the ball, in my mind. Sure, it sure does. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Will. And on that note, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Everything Podcast. Uh, we'll... Be back next week with a guest, perhaps. Um, And we will be talking about Avatar, The Way of Water. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this episode, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.